And the best article that they write, which they're going to write that day, we will turn into the lantern in hopes that they'll get published and get extra credit for that. So that's where I call an audible, is when we're so far ahead of where I imagined that we would be that we need to execute something else. What are some other challenges that you can think of? How comfortable were you with your iPads when you first got them? How many of you are still not quite sure what you're supposed to do with your iPad? It's pretty fun. I, I, I watch uh, Sherlock on it whenever I wash dishes. Uh, let's see. I, uh, my kid, you know, he draws on it. He loves to draw hockey jerseys. He's drawing those all the time on his iPad. What else do you do with your iPad when you first get it? What do you guys do with your iPads when you first got it? Who checked their email? Steve? Netflix. Netflix, absolutely. Check their email, maybe check Facebook. That's the problem. We think that they know technology. They only know what they know. And you know, as the woman from Northridge said, you don't know what you don't know. They have no idea the power of the tool that's in their hands. And they don't recognize it to be a tool until we teach them. What they view it as is something extra they have to carry around. That's more work than their, than their, de their laptop or their desktop is re in reality. They're used to their laptop. They understand how it works and how to navigate different sites and what it means. I can't use Carmen on this. I can, they can do a quiz, but they have, there's no way for them to upload material onto Carmen through this iPad. So you know, when you're trying to do those things, it's so labor intensive. We didn't get pages when we first launched this semester. Oh my God, they were like paralyzed. And they were ready to bail on it because it, if it doesn't work the way that they're used to things working, they don't want to deal with it. They are comfortable where they are. So we devoted much more time this semester to educating them about iPads, what they mean, how they work, how you can utilize them, which apps would be most useful. We gave them to them. I devoted an entire, I say I, I mean I watched while Corey devoted an entire week to making them comfortable with their apps. I sent them home for the weekend with no assignments whatsoever from the first day of class until the following Tuesday so that they could just hang out with those iPads and get to know them. I said, name them. You know, give them personality, set your wallpaper, set up whatever accounts you want to access on here. I don't care. I don't want you to do a single bit of work. Don't look at a lecture. Just hang out with it and get comfortable. And by, the, and by doing that this semester, they came in much more eager to work. They were anxious to get to, they'd already gotten to know it. Now they wanted to know how to use it. And you know, the benefit of like this whole idea of flipping and the iTunes U courses, I'm going to lie a little bit because I told, on Tuesday when we didn't have any classes, you guys remember we froze out that day? I told them something, sorry guys, you're not off. Like, here's some links I want you to look at, and they're, they're in your iPad. So read these articles, and start to get a feel for news, and go to these news sites, and start reading these things. And when we had the next time that we canceled, because of weather, they were doing a quiz, they were writing an article, we were doing a Google Hangout together on our iPads. Because there is no stopping technology. I'm not going to sit back and you know, watch what my kid does in Columbus Public Schools, which is nothing when there's a snow day. These guys are still going. And they are so far ahead of where prior classes would be because they've learned to use the technology for good and not evil. And what that means is, how many of you are afraid that your students are going to fiddle on Twitter or Facebook or they're going to be emailing or texting or doing whatever when they're in class? How many of you worry about that? Only one person working. Come on, guys. Don't, as I tell my kid, don't bullshit a bullshitter here. So the fact is, is we are worried about it. And you know what? I give them something to do. So they all have to tweet in class. I require it. They have to write something that's happening in class. And what happens is, you guys may find it. I mean, you're an unbelievably attentive audience. But truthfully, we all now, we're clickers. We want to be moving on some mobile device or some activity within like 35 seconds, a minute, so I give them something to do when they have that urge. And by doing that, and I follow them on Twitter, I mean, I'll be looking at them in class while we're, you know, I, I have them all, I'll show you here, on Hootsuite. And I follow not only the hashtags that we, that's been so my direct messages. This is the hashtag that we have for our news writing class, 2221. I actually have a hashtag for my law class, 3404, and I have it for a magazine writing course. And then I also follow them over here under OSU journalism so I can see are they tweeting about things they shouldn't be while we're in class and you know amazingly so they're not so I see them tweeting that the, what they're supposed to be which is hey we're working on this thing about uh, you know the inverted pyramid I'm wondering about blah 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 they ask me questions on here that they wouldn't necessarily ask in class or they're not going to take the time to send an email so they're learning that each one of these tools means something to them 
And each one of these tools will advance them as they move forward into the working world. And their ability to build an online portfolio for themselves from day one that they're in these classes will ultimately enable them to be recognized online. And that is our first impression now. There is no such thing as the first impression in the working world. So that's what they're building on here in addition to all of the coursework that I'm asking them to do. They're building blogs, each one of them, and there's an app for that. And I, I, I hate to sound like I'm a, a, you know, a Mac commercial, but that's really what the question is. I called Corey the other day because we were trying to open zip files, and I can't believe he didn't actually say to me, you know, idiot, there's an app for that. But that's pretty much what we came to the conclusion of. There's a way to do everything, and we're figuring some things out together. We're giving them a certain amount of information, but they want to navigate this. They want to use this in a way that will be constructive to them. If we push them a little bit in the right direction, they are picking up where we're leaving off. So right now, I've launched, here's this is our Twitter feed, which we just love, um, but I've launched four courses on iTunes U. I have this one, Media Law and Ethics. Um, I also have uh, Magazine Writing, the Writing and Editing for News, which is the only one of my classes that actually has all iPads. So the other classes are all in iTunes U, and the 10 students in each of those that have iPads use the iTunes U course and really enjoy it. The other ones, it's a little bit laborious. So I have things up on Carmen, which I don't know how many of you hate Carmen as much as I do, but I'm really not fond of Carmen. But I use it for them to, because it's something they're comfortable with. I put things up on YouTube. I have an entire document of links that would be accessible like that in iTunes U that they now have to download from Carmen and they have to click on the links and all those things because we don't have iPads in everybody's hands yet. But I teach with the intention that everybody will get iPads because I believe that strongly that for me to produce students who want to learn and are willing to meet me all the way in this learning environment if I meet them where they want to learn. So they don't want me to be standing in front of them lecturing them. They desperately don't. They, to all of them, I'm just like my dad, giving them this lecture. What they want is to be able to listen to this material at 3 o'clock in the morning or at 10 o'clock in the morning when I'm in another class, or they want to do it four or five times because they're not sure what I said, or they don't take notes very quickly, or they actually don't want to take any notes. They just want to gloss over it and just read the slides. They don't want to necessarily listen to me at all. There's all kinds of ways that our students learn. And if we stick with the same old way of presenting our materials, we are not going to create the students that we were. Those days are gone. Our attention span will never be duplicated again. They are different types of learners than us. And if we recognize that these tools will help us meet them where they want to learn, and we can equip them to learn more effectively in that platform that they want to learn, we will create lifelong learners, I believe. And that's what we're seeing now, is that they are consuming because this is still a toy. This is still uh, something that they don't get the chance to utilize all that often for something that really means something to them. And that's why I think that they are so much more engaged than they ever were when I handed them a piece of paper and a pen. Does anyone have any questions? Yes? What are, where are they writing their story? They, uh, we have a couple different things. So most of the typing that they do is here in pages. These are actually, I guess I should skip out of this because that's grades that I did earlier in another class. Um, so they will write stories in here uh, in pages. That's the primary one. They also use Evernote for taking notes because Evernote as I'm sure you guys know, you can record. I have a little recording. You can take pictures, you can record, you can embed all of these things in here. That's my kids' bar mitzvah list. So, so here we go. Here's a meeting that we were planning for our South by Southwest panel. So you can type in here, you can um, go up here, you can attach a photo. So if I took a photo of all of you, and I accept this one, it'll embed in this document. I can also record audio, so it wants to access my microphone. So right now it's recording exactly what I'm saying, and it saves it. Microphone. So right now it's recording exactly what I'm saying. So that's how they take notes, is they can type, they can record, they can take a picture, all in the same platform. The other thing, you know, I, I always, uh, I like to write on their articles, I don't like to type on them. So I use uh, one of two apps. This one's called Notability. And Corey knows he's going to laugh at me, but I like this because I can write in purple ink. I like to write in purple ink, and I can't do that on the other one. So what Notability offers me is the opportunity to edit each one of their articles. So for example, I don't want to give you something that's already been graded. 
Um, these are all articles, well, hopefully one of them will care. Um, she got a perfect score, so there we go. Uh, so this is a PDF that it comes in. I can pull this in, a Word document, a PDF, a pages, anything, any other format I can pull in and then I can annotate it as a PDF and then when I want to send it back to them, I can email it or put it in a Dropbox. I can send just the PDF. I can also, there's paper at the bottom of this <coughs> that allows me to write copious notes if I want to. I can send them the paper and I can record a piece of audio. So I make a recording. So down here, there's a little microphone and right now I'm recording on her file and then it would send as a zip file. Stop it. And right now I'm recording on her file so I record a note to them, each article that I edit or anything that I'm editing of theirs, I can write and I can do it. So they can do the same thing. They can take their notes and record or do whatever they want to do. Is there any equivalent of what Word does with the comment function? Or pages. The, so mean, in pages, um, I can actually, uh, I'm in a document. I go up, oops, wrong one. I go up here to the little tool thing. It says tracking and I can actually mark up and I can leave notes on it that way. So it's ju this is just like Word. And you can type it as well? Mm -hmm. as yes. What feedback have you gotten on typing? You guys probably do quite Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, the first semester we blew that. Uh, we, we blew a lot of things, I'll be honest with you. Trial and error. I felt bad for the, my poor little guinea pigs, but they were good sports. So the keyboard is a, is a drag for a lot of people. Um, so we did not equip them. We bought six keyboards for 30 people basically and figured they'd use them when they felt like it. They really needed keyboards desperately. So now this last semester I invested in a keyboard for everybody and that's made a big difference. I use, um, as Corey's got it in front of him, I use a case that has a keyboard built into it that's a Bluetooth keyboard and I, I use that obsessively. So I don't like the virtual keyboard. Um, I like that one much more.